and boom! You didn't expect a 71 meter steel skyscraper coming back from the upper atmosphere to survive splashing down, did you? Hello everybody and welcome! When this video goes live, we will be probably moments away from SpaceX's Starship launching on its second integrated flight test. We are going to look at the expected flight profile and then rate every step with a probability from very low to very high, based on past performance. I will be using the game Kerbal Space Program 2 as a visual aid throughout this video, so we have some shiny graphics to look at. Before we get going, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more videos where I dive into all things space and deep dives into the development of KSP2 and of course a lot of shenanigans within the game. And while you watch, let me know in the comments how you rate the phases I list up here. Now, let's light that steel candle. Lift off! The first flight test of a fully stacked Starship and Super Heavy booster had a lot of problems. One of it was the destruction of the launch pad due to the sheer force of 33 Raptor engines blasting for multiple seconds straight at the flat piece of concrete. The damage to the pad and the surrounding area was significant. To prevent that from happening again, SpaceX has installed a new water deluge system. Basically it's a giant sandwich of steel plates with water running between them, which is then pushed out towards the engines, similar to a shower head. SpaceX already performed a full duration static fire test with it and at least this time no concrete pieces were launched at unsuspecting minivans. As long as the Raptor engines do their job, I rate the probability of liftoff as very high. But speaking of Raptor engines, we need to talk about the ascent phase. Building a rocket engine is hard. Let me rephrase that. Building a rocket engine is extremely hard. Raptor is one of the most complicated and powerful engines in existence and it has been the cause of many Starship failures in the past. For instance, during the test flight of Starship SN8 when the engine starting to combust itself, leading to a green flame. We also learned after the demise of SN11 that a Raptor engine was to blame for that one. And during the first fully integrated Starship test flight, you could start counting the Raptor engines going out one by one during the ascent. And even during the static fire of Booster 9, which only lasted a couple of seconds, two Raptors didn't run for the full duration. SpaceX made a lot of improvements to the booster since the first flight, but based on past performance I give this phase of the flight going off without a hitch a probability of low. But if Starship makes it high up enough into the atmosphere, we will enter uncharted territories, because now we have steps that haven't yet been performed by the vehicle. And one crucial part for that is… Stage separation. Last time around Starship and the Super Heavy Booster didn't separate. This time things are supposed to be different. And something is indeed different. SpaceX have modified Booster 9 with a hot staging ring on top. Basically what they will attempt is to light engines of Starship before releasing it. And those hot exhaust gases need to escape somewhere. That's why the upper ring of the booster has all these slots cut into it. The plan as it is known so far involves lighting the large nozzle vacuum engines first and only ignite the three atmospheric raptors after Starship has moved away from the booster. Here in my KSP2 simulation I rely solely on the center engines because for some reason the vehicle starts to lose control when I turn on the other ones. So some slight creative liberty there. The big question though is, will this work? Hot staging is a tried and true method in spaceflight. Russia's Soyuz has been doing it for decades very successfully. But here we have unproven hardware and unproven processes. SpaceX do have a lot of experience with staging from their Falcon rockets though. I would assume that they know what they're doing. So in my opinion the probability for success is medium. Now we have two vehicles. Starship proper and the booster. Let's remain with the latter one first and talk about Booster Return. 
When it reaches its final form, SpaceX want to guide their super heavy boosters back to the launch tower and catch it with those mechanical arms, lovingly dubbed chopsticks, that will require some extreme precision control during landing. But not this time. SpaceX don't want to destroy their complex launch tower, also called Stage Zero, at the first chance they get, so the booster is going to be dropped into the ocean. But the flight profile does call for a boost back burn and a descent burn before it splashes down, provided the hot staging maneuver does not lead to the booster taking too much damage to perform this part of the flight. Here's me performing the boost back burn in KSP2 with the landing attempt a short while later. And boom! You didn't expect a 71 meter steel skyscraper coming back from the upper atmosphere to survive splashing down on the first try, did you? Remember how many attempts it took for Falcon 9 until it finally stuck the landing? Yes, SpaceX now have the technique down for that rocket. But Starship is a different beast and so is the Raptor engine. Just like with the ascent phase, a lot is going to depend on that piece of equipment to work. 33 engines need to work until stage separation. Then all but three of them have to shut down for stage separation and run at just 50% thrust. Then 10 Raptors will have to turn on for the boost back burn, then all have to shut down, and for the landing burn a gimbaled set of Raptors will have to reignite, keeping the booster hovering above the water before it splashes down in the Gulf of Mexico. I have a lot of respect for the engineers at SpaceX, but that's just a lot of variables and a lot of this is depending on Raptors performance, which so far has been spotty. Therefore I believe the probability of this part of the flight working as planned is very low. Now that we got the booster out of the way, let's go back to Starship itself, which by now should be in the coast phase. Assuming that stage separation has worked and nothing got explodified so far, yes that's now a word, Starship's engines will fire for a couple of minutes until engine cutoff after which the coast phase begins. The important thing here is going to keep communications with the vehicle up and running while it performs almost an orbit around the Earth. But again, this is something that SpaceX has a lot of experience with since they perform orbital flights with Falcon 9 basically all the time. If we assume that the vehicle has survived so far and the Raptor engines have worked to boost Starship enough to reach its target trajectory, I would rate the probability for this part of the flight to work as very high. Since this is a suborbital flight, Starship will have to come back at one point, which will be the time for re-entry. Will Starship survive the rigors of atmospheric re-entry? The heat buildup, the increase in aerodynamic forces? Well, the rocket is already proven quite stable while cartwheeling through the atmosphere during its first flight, while also resisting the initial attempt to blow it up with the flight termination system. More on that later. Also, re-entry from a suborbital trajectory will deal with a lot less energy than if Starship returns from a higher orbit, or maybe the Moon, or from Mars. So the tiles on the belly of the ship won't have to do so much. This KSP2 recreation does not have to deal with any re-entry heat, because that feature is going to be implemented with the upcoming Point 2.0 update, also called For Science. Nevertheless, it is a critical phase of the flight because Starship will also need to use its flaps to steer itself through the upper atmosphere in such a way that it does not break up. The flaps you can see here are working differently since we don't have robotic parts in Curl Space Program 2 to correctly replicate how Starship works, but I think you get the idea. Due to the comparatively low stress on the vehicle and the fact that Starship has proven that the flap control system works in the past, I would say the probability for re-entry succeeding is high. From high back to low, Starship has to come down at one point, which is the final part of the flight. Splashdown! I'm being a lot more gentle with my Starship replica here than SpaceX is going to be with their original thing. They just want to let it fall down in a horizontal orientation. The spectacular flip and burn maneuver that we have seen on previous Starship test flights will not be attempted. The vehicle is expected to break up upon impact, not spin itself unconscious. As long as Starship manages to stay in its desired orientation, gravity will take care of the rest. So if all previous phases have worked, 
the probability of this can be rated as very high. Alright, this would conclude a full flight profile of Starship's second integrated flight test. And we got the probabilities of each phase right here. But what happens if one of these phases does not work out as intended? What if the flight has to be aborted or rather terminated? Then we divert to a crucial component, the flight termination system. A flight termination system, usually abbreviated as FTS, is a required part of any rocket in order to safely terminate the flight, as the name suggests, should anything go wrong. Basically, the FTS are a bunch of explosives that should lead to the vehicle disintegrating immediately once triggered. That's the theory. During the first integrated flight test, Starship had a different idea. The FTS was triggered after the flight was deemed lost, but it didn't immediately lead to the destruction of the vehicle. This was one of the things that SpaceX had to improve in order to receive the launch license for the second flight. So we can be sure that they beefed up the explosives this time around. Therefore, I would rate the probability of the FTS working this time as very high. But of course, we don't want the FTS to be triggered. We want Starship to successfully perform its flight as planned. So let's keep our fingers crossed that a few hours after this video was released, we can all celebrate the next step in humanity's spaceflight evolution. Or maybe in a couple of days if they have to scrub the launch. That's the beauty of making content in advance, I guess. Anyway, if you enjoyed this little excursion into Starship's second integrated flight test, leave a like or if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel for future videos. I have already some interesting things lined up like a deep dive into the Soviet space shuttle Buran. Also, let me know in the comments if you agree on my probability assessments for the phases of this test flight. Or head on over to my Discord server, where we have assembled a group of like-minded space enthusiasts and have a chat with us. The only thing left is to cross our fingers for Starship to actually perform the flight. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.